Right, now if you watch this animation very closely, you would have seen my horrible... And there I am, and I'm going to show you how to put a picture of you, your cat, your mum, your girlfriend, or anyone else you like, into this animation. Now I'm going to use a image editing program called GIMP, which is also a free program you can download. You can use Photoshop, uh, any image editor really that can save um, PNG files, that's portable network graphics, and can handle transparency. And I believe even the latest version of Windows Paint can do that. So you can use pretty much anything now. And this is how you prepare a file. First of all, you find the photo you like, or in this case, the photo I'm forced to use, and um, you select what you want, crop it all down so that all you've got in the picture is the bit that you want and uh, then having done that you use the eraser and you rub out the background you need to make that a bit bigger oh I only got a small brush alright that would be better yeah that's better Ah. Now there's no transparency, it's come out white. Um, so I need to add an alpha channel. There you go. And now we see the checkers, it's transparent. And all paint programs seem to have that standard sort of checkered background that they use to indicate transparency. So now I'm going to rub out all the major areas, roughly. Which obviously does a lot of the work without me having to tiddle around. And then what I'm going to do is zoom in and show you a couple of different methods of uh, removing the background on a finer scale. And there's a couple of methods that I use for this. The simplest and easiest one is simply to use an eraser tool with a smaller brush than I've been using at the moment to literally trace around what I want to keep and then rub out the outside. And this is how that works. We'll zoom in. There we go. We'll adjust the brush to a more appropriate size. Rather than 10 times full size, or even 0.24, we'll go to something like, I don't know, 0.6 for 1 or something. And there you go. So I'm going to draw a line using the brush. And I'm just holding the shift key down and going around the outline, don't have to be too exact because obviously you're only seeing this image at quite a reduced scale but you know you can take your time and do it properly or you can do what I'm doing here and do a quick rush job then I take out all the rest of it in practice what I'd normally do is go around the whole of the image like that then select a bigger brush and then get rid of the outside but this is just to show you how it works and don't forget to do the bits that are inside it oh there's a bit I missed get rid of that well I remember don't forget to do the inside area like the attractive area between my knees uh, don't forget to erase those and uh, right around areas like hair which is pretty tricky most programs have a th an equivalent to my magic wand tool here in GIMP and that selects all areas that are within a certain tolerance, set by the threshold slider, the same colour. And I can select, press the delete key, and select, and press the delete key, and so on, until I've deleted all the bits I want to delete. And that's easier when you've got a fiddly area like here, so long as the background colour is near enough the same, which it is with sky, um, where there's a pattern, obviously, you can't use it. You have to go around it, with a very fine brush and it takes a long time but there you are that's the sort of thing that you do um, and I'm gonna do that and I'll come back to you in a minute and here we are again then I've finished it so we'll uh, just save it as you can see it's not perfect it's still a bit of blue around the hair it's taken me about 12 minutes to cut myself out of the picture like that um, so there we go. 
and we want to save it and we want to save it as PNG otherwise we'll lose all the transparency that we want you could use GIF but unfortunately like a lot of programs nowadays um, Blender won't take GIF files because you have to pay a license free and Blender, Blender is a free program so PNG we don't have to pay license fees so we'll save it as PNG save it in the right directory where I keep all the other files I use for 3D projects and there we go and it says everything there I'll just leave it at the defaults and save the damn thing right we can get rid of that and go to Blender right here we are back in our Blender scene so we'll what we need to do, we'll go back to the beginning again just so we know where everything is and we'll add a plane I'll just show you something first of all, there's the plane right? now you can tiddle around like this and try and rotate it and position it there's a much better way if I hit control X and get rid of the plane and then I'll re-add it um, hit control Z control Z again delete, me delete the damn thing, what the hell right there we go, re-added it, now you'll see down at the bottom left there's this neat little thing, a line to view what that's done is it stood the plane up there you go, so it faces the camera because we're in camera view at the moment and that's exactly what we want so that we can actually see the image and check that we've imported it correctly I'm not standing on my head or you know um, that it is transparent and all those things especially that last one that it is transparent because there's a few settings you have to set up in Blender to make this work properly and I'll go through the typical process you'll go through right so I've resized it a bit because I know it's a long thin image and not a short fat one or a square one and now I'll go to uh, go to the texture I'll go to material sorry um, add a new material like so and turn the intensity down turn the specular down make it emit um, it's going to be a bright image of me so it's going to actually produce light almost as if it's a lamp right we're going to texture and we'll change that from clouds to image or movie again open our file which I called the brighten 2 and there I am now you can see there's a horrible white line to get rid of that we go down to where it says under the image bit and pre-multiply we check that and that gets rid of that horrible white line ok brilliant now there's a few more things we need to do and I'm bound to forget one or two of them so I always do so uh, bear with me here one of the things I'm doing I'm going to change the brightness a bit because I'm a bit too bright there uh, no, no, yeah, something like that. And I'm going to change the saturation. No, I'm going to just change the blue value in the RGB settings because I'm a bit too blue, I reckon. There we go. That's a bit better. I'm not quite that blue. Right. So we we'll go down right to the bottom. Um, don't want to change anything in there. What we want to change is we want to make sure we've got show alpha selected at the top there and go back to materials, change that to a plane and as you can see I'm on there but I'm on a white background. Now what we've got to do is get rid of that white background which is the diffuse colour and the way to do that is 
Excuse me, I'm just trying to remember, but as you can see, it would actually render like that. Yeah, right. Um, what I'd forgotten to do is turn transparency on and turn alpha all the way down to nothing. So I'm invisible in the materials box until, as you see, until I go to the texture box, just go right down to the bottom, and as well as the colour, which is already selected, I turn on the influence for alpha as well. And now, it should do, there we go. So you make it completely invisible and then turn on set the texture influence for alpha and you get what you want. Now that's in the wrong place obviously because it wants to be reflected um, but it's also the wrong way around because he's facing us. So I've got to turn that plane around and um, I'll do it roughly in the box. Um, let's just have a quick look. Excuse me while I tiddle around a bit here. You'll find yourself doing a lot of tiddling around in Blender. Yeah. So what I need to do is I'll do it by clicking the box in the menu system there and I'll change that rotation in Z um, to around about 180 plus that, so about 226. That's got it roughly right because the others should have changed as well to make it align exactly with the camera. So that's nearly there. And then what I can do, if I'll render that, you see I'm a little bit distorted because the plane's twisted. So what I want to do is I want to twist the plane back to align the, to the camera a bit more. Uh, so we'll do that using the handles, rotation handles. There we go. And as you can see, I can twist it around that way, that way. And it's come back to me a bit more, and it needs to rotate that way. And it's roughly there. I think that's good enough. It's good enough. So now it's in the right rotation, and uh, I'm going to come out as a mirror image on the cube, which is what I want. Okay, I'll just turn the intensity of the cube up a bit so we can see what we're doing. Um, it won't affect the render because it's mirrored. Um, I'll just turn it up so we can see the faces. So I can see where it wants to go. Now, that looks about it, but frame 35. So what I'm going to tell myself is that frame 35, my image wants to be roughly centered in the cube. Okay. So if we think about how things reflect, it obviously wants to be opposite the reflecting surface. Um, the camera is above the reflecting surface, so it wants to be a bit down from the camera. But it needs to be behind the camera, and it needs to be larger than the camera. And you could mess around for hours. But the best thing to do, and here is how you would probably think to do it. So this is what I said before, you should get the 3D cursor. And you could tiddle around like this and fiddle about and fiddle about until you get it exactly on the end of the camera. But if you select the camera, snap the 3D cursor to the camera, then select the plane, snap the plane to the 3D cursor, you know then that it is exactly on the back of the camera. You can just pull it back a little tiny bit. There you go. And now what we need to do is to pull it over a little bit towards the left. And yeah, it's going to need to go up. It's going to need to be scaled as well. So we'll, uh, we'll drop it and scale it, I think. That's probably the best thing to do. S for scale. Move the mouse pointer out. 
I was kind of guessing, but I think that'll be about right. So uh, we'll go back to camera view and we'll do a test render. Oh, look, I've just missed. <laughs> so I need to go left quite a bit. I need to go up a bit. So. It's. Um, find an appropriate viewpoint we can adjust it from. Uh, hit the scroll button, the scroll wheel rather. We go up a bit and left and left. And if it's my lucky day, I've got that right. I've done this a few times. Yes. Look at that. Bang in the middle. Good, for, good effort, even if I say so myself. Right. And that's how you get your picture to appear as a reflection. And it's obviously standing in front of whatever background you've got on there. That wasn't too difficult, was it? And now what we'll do is we'll save it. Before we try doing anything else, we'll show hide the animation. And... Now we look okay. Just a bit of a final check around to make sure we seem okay, you know. Now what I want, I want an excuse. And I want an excuse for the cube to blow into pieces, so I'm going to shoot it. And I'm going to shoot it with something that's going to be quite difficult to see. It's going to be like a glass marble. So I've added a UV sphere, and it's centred on the cube. And I've done that for a very cunning reason, because I know that if I grab hold of the red handle and take it into the background, then it's going to be moving in a straight line in a direction that I can control. So I oh know it's going to go through the centre of the sphere. So I've scaled it down and I've positioned it just outside the visible point. And then what we're going to do is we're going to move to the start of the animation. And we're going to create a keyframe just before the thing hits. And then it's going to run along that line there, which is the red handle, until it hits the cube. Now we want it to hit the cube at frame 70. Well, frame, yeah, frame 70, which is when it starts to disintegrate. So we're going to place it where we want it to hit the cube at frame 70. There you go. And we'll do a location keyframe now. And now it's going to carry on, and we want it to carry on for quite some way because we want to get rid of any shadows um, that it causes. So we're going to move on a little bit further in time and we're going to insert another keyframe with it well out of the way. Another location keyframe there. Like so. And we'll move on a bit more just to make sure that the thing's well out of the render frame. So I remember the first time I did this I had gone bullet casting shadows when it was stationary it looked a bit weird because you had this stationary shadow there. There we go. Right, so that's that. We need to give it a material now. And I'm going to make it look like a bit like glass but 
without the mirror effect. So I'll add a new material for it. And uh, I'm going to make it sort of purpley colour. Hmm, baby pink. I don't think so. Let's make it purple. Thank you. That'll do. Something like that. Turn the specular, well, yeah, about halfway because we want to see a glint or something on it. You won't really see it, it'll be just like a, a blurry purple thing. But and we're going to turn the alpha down, it might need to go down a bit more than that. But um, I might even need to go down more than that. We'll try it, we'll do a test rest render. So we'll tiddle around with the animation control until we get it in shots about there. That'll do. We'll do a test render. There it is, and it casts a shadow, which is good. And it's a little bit too solid. We want this to be subtle. It's going to be quite difficult for the eye to see, but when you look for it, you'll see it. So if someone says to themselves, why did that cube suddenly fall apart? And they look at it again, they'll see it. And there you go, it's sort of like a ghostly marble. I think that's good enough. So the next thing for us to do is to save the file again. And uh, we can go and go into render settings. And we can set up to render. And the render settings are in fact the camera at the left hand side there. Now, We've already done the preset for the size. We want to turn up the anti-aliasing a bit to make it look a bit better. You could do full sample if you're being ultra critical. And um, the other thing we want is the output. Now we want to put it, I'm just going to put it in my desktop, so rather than the temporary folder. And um, whereas a professional would want to render it as an image sequence, a sequence of PNG images. We're not going to worry about that, I'll change that in a minute. And that's for desktop, and I'm going to call it cube something. And Blender will automatically add some numbers on there, um, depending on when you generate it. Right, so we changed it to X video down the bottom there, not PNG. So we're going to actually render direct to video, which all the professionals will tell you not to do because then you can't do anything with it afterwards, but hey. And render animation. And no sooner do I click render animation than I realise there's something I need to do. That shadow is far too black. And we need what the photographers call an infill light. So I'll press the escape key. And the escape key will stop it from rendering. It stops most things in Blender. Um, there we go. Right, so we'll go back to our 3D view and we're going to add another light. This will be on the opposite side to the sun and it fills in the shadows, but not very much, so it's going to be very low brightness. So you go up to the Add menu and uh, select Light Lamp, sorry, Point is the one we want. And that, needless to say, was put where the cursor is, which is in the middle of the cube. So we'll drag that around until it's at an appropriate position. We want it to be a bit higher than the cube and on the side opposite from the sun, which is the left-hand side. And we're going to turn the intensity right the way down to like, I don't know, 0.5 or maybe even lower. We'll see what that looks like. That's fine. And you can see what we've done there is we've picked up some of the details that are in the shadow and that makes it look a lot better because when you look at shadows normally you can see things in them they're not completely black um, not unless you've got an extremely strong light source anyway so now we can render it and that's it after it's finished rendering in about 10 minutes you've completely finished your first animation thank you